All right, we'll call the Board of Adjustment meeting to order for Tuesday, October 24th, 2017. We do have a full board this afternoon. And the first item on our agenda is the approval of the October 24th, 2017. 20, 20, oh, no, we're approving today's agenda. Today's approval of today's agenda. Second. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That passes. We have an agenda. Second item is the approval of September 26, 2017 <laughs> minutes. Um, I move that we approve them. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 That is approved. We have approved the minutes for the last meeting. Next, we come to decision items, and our first decision item is a request by Signs by Tomorrow on behalf of MJ Holdings for three variances to allow for the re replacement of the faces on a one pre-existing 21-square-foot self-illuminating sign with a translucent background when the ordinance requires signs to have an op opaque background. Number two, to allow for a set the, for a total of 75.53 square foot of total signage, which is 52.13 square foot more than the 23.4 square foot allowed within the R4 multiple family residence district. And number three, allow for signage to be placed on three walls and located at 110 Plaza Circle. Do we have a staff report on that? Uh, Mr. Chair, Seth Heiberger did the staff report. He's not here. I just realized that. John, do you know what happened to Seth? No. So I don't know a whole lot about the staff report. Uh, I think the applicant, are they here? Do we have the applicant here? We do? Yes? No? Let's see an applicant. This is the uh, same same signage that they had on it prior to. I mean, they have this much signage. Well, they've added right quite now. a bit. Well, they've added some other additional signage. I tell you what, let's go through it. Mm -hmm. and, you table uh, it. Is he coming in? Can we table till the end of the meeting somehow? Yeah, I was going to say you want to put it at the end of the agenda. I'd move that we table it and move it to the end of the okay. agenda. Yeah. We, we can do that, Mr. Western? That's right? Sad. Yes. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I just have not done anything on the staff report, so I wanted to make sure we had all the answers. Okay. We, we have a motion to table to the end of the agenda. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. We have moved that to item number four at the end. Our next item up for a decision is a request by Wes Miller for a variance to the maximum accessory structure to allow for the construction of a 3,600-square-foot pole building while keeping an existing 800 square foot detached garage for a total of 4,400 square foot, 2,600 square foot over the maximum of 1,800 square feet, and to allow for a 16 foot height, one foot over the maximum height of 15 foot, and allow for metal siding in an A1 agricultural district. Located at 3520 DeWitt Road. Staff report on this? Uh, this is Western with staff. The request to exceed the, the size height overall square footage limit and to have metal siding for an accessory structure associated with a single family residential use would not have a negative impact uh, upon the surrounding area as precedence has been set for the area. It would appear that the request would not have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the surrounding area as it actually sits on a dead end. Um, so there's not a lot of traffic there. Um, the request would be in conformance with the comprehensive, being in conformance with the classification of this area as agricultural on the future land use map within the city of Waterloo. Uh, accessory structures that are not a part of the main building shall not exceed 15 feet in height with less than two, a two-story principal permitted use or exceed 1,800 square feet and required to have residential siting. However, there have been several variances granted in the area that is rural in nature. In a related case, an applicant at 3545 Ranchero Road requested a height variance of 18.5 feet for a pole building next to his primary residence. September 25th, 2012, the Board of Adjustment approved the variance to allow for storage of a motorhome since it would not be taller than the existing house in the property. Secondly, on May 29, 2014, the Board of Adjustment granted a variance to exceed the 1,800 square foot maximum size limit for accessory structures, 15 foot maximum height limit, and accessory structure siding requirement to allow for the construction of a new 30 by 64 or 1,920 square foot accessory structure 
with vertical metal siding and a height of 18.5 feet, 120 square feet larger than the maximum allowed, and 2.5 feet taller than the maximum located at 3838 Ranchero Road. Lack of reasonable return. There appeared not to be a lack of reasonable return when it comes to the height of the building. The property is used for residential purposes and can have a 15 foot height in conjunction with the single story primary structure, but would appear uh, compatible with other surrounding accessory structures. Uniqueness, there would appear to be a uniqueness to the request to exceed the maximum size limit and height limit as the Board of Adjustment has approved several variances to the height, size, and siding for several properties in the area, and the area is rural agricultural area. Public considerations, approval of the height limit variance would not have a negative impact upon the surrounding area as there have been several similar requests approved in the area and the property in question is surrounded by agricultural uses and is located on a street that is a dead end that's dead ended by Highway 20. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by West Miller for a variance to the maximum accessory structure limit to allow for the construction of a 3,600 square foot pole building while keeping an existing 800 square foot detached garage for a total of 4,400 square feet, 2,600 square feet over the maximum of 1,800 square feet and to allow for 16 foot height, one foot over the maximum height of 15 feet, allow for metal siding in an A1 agricultural district located at 3520 DeWitt Road be approved for the following reasons. The request would not have a negative impact upon the surrounding area as precedent has been set for the area as it is rural in nature. There would appear to be a valid uniqueness to, the, to exceed the maximum height allowed as the area is rural in nature as it is surrounded by agricultural uses. And the area is agricultural in nature with vertical metal siding, uh, which vertical metal siding is compatible with. Thank you, Mr. Western. Are there any questions from the board for staff? Uh, how many? How big is the, the lot that we're talking about? Uh, I believe it was an applicant is in the uh, audience. Three acres. Three acres, yeah. Any more questions for staff? No? Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak for or against this? If so, just come up to the microphone, tell us your address, and give us your name. Okay. <laughs> uh, Wes Miller, 3520 DeWitt Road. Um, I don't know. I'm for it. Thumbs up. Um, <laughs> just <clears throat> over time, we've accumulated, I, I don't know, stuff, trailers and tractors and things that we'd like to have parked inside so they don't sit outside in the winter anymore and you know in Iowa uh, indoor storage is premium and and uh, we're hoping that we had a back when we lived over off Ainsboro saw the, of 20 there we had 1800 square feet and believe it or not that filled up pretty quick so we're just looking for some more area so that, that land there is the picture I have here it looks like that was a part of a larger farm or it's my grandmother's farm she owns all the farm ground around there basically just cut that piece off of there. Yeah. Okay. okay. It, it's, so the, the, when we bought the property, we rezoned it. Um, and in order to make that happen, we had to have part of the cornfield be included to make the, the three acre size limit. Um, up until this point, it's all been just cornfield. Um, well, I was just uh, looking at the picture and it appears that there's ag buildings all around it so you're not no there is ag buildings up on top of the hill and everything anything else so. new to the no area. no it's yeah. all over Thank you. All right. any more questions for mr miller all right thank you mr miller thank you anyone else in the audience that would like to speak for or against this matter <clears throat> second time all right i would bring it back to the board for a possible vote and discussion okay, i'll make a motion to to the request by wes for a variance the maximum accessory structure limit to allow for the construction of a 3,600 square foot pole building while keeping an existing 800 square foot detached garage for a total of 4,400 square feet, 2,600 square feet over the maximum of 1,800 square feet and to allow for a 16 foot height, one inch over, or one foot over the maximum height of 15 feet allow for a metal siding in an A1 agricultural district um, 
for the following reasons. The request would not have a negative impact upon the surrounding area. Uh, there would appear to be a valid uniqueness to exceed the height because it's in a rural area. Likewise, the vertical steel siding would be compatible with an agricultural area. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That does pass. Congratulations. You can build your shed. The snow's coming. Better get to it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Our next item up for discussion is a request by city builders on behalf of Deborah and Mike Slater for a variance to allow for the construction of a room addition with a seven foot side yard setback, three, three foot less than the minimum <laughs> side yard setback of 10 foot required, located at 4002 Homer Street. Is there a staff report on this? This is Western with staff. Uh, the property is located at the corner of Homer Street and Lakeside Street. The property in question, as well as all other surrounding properties, are zoned R2 1 and 2 Family Residence District and have been zoned as such since the adoption of the ordinance in 1969. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact upon the surrounding area as there is an existing detached garage that was built in 1956 that is approximately five feet from the property line uh, along Lakeside that has not caused any issues over the years. Uh, the request would not appear to have any negative impact on traffic. Uh, the home is a single story home built in 1956 with a 22 by 22 or 484 square foot detached garage built in 1956 that was built in the required front yard along Lakeside Street approximately five feet from the property line, five feet short of what is required of the current zoning ordinance requirements adopted in 1969. The proposed addition would have a setback of seven feet, but would be set back further than the existing deep dash garage and would not appear to cause any site visibility <coughs> issues or look out of character with the neighborhood. Lack of reasonable return, there would appear to be a lack of reasonable return to the request as the applicant lot is on a corner lot that requires two front yard setbacks of 20 feet along Homer and a minimum of setback uh, of 10 feet along Lakeside. The lot is 64 by 100, which is considered a legal lot according to the current ordinance requirements. However, the corner setback requirements can be restricted for those looking to improve their properties. Uh, the majority of the nearby uh, uniqueness, the majority of the nearby Side yard setbacks are at 20 feet. However, the proposed addition would set back further than the existing detached garage. Approval of a seven foot side yard setback would not appear to be out of character with the neighborhood. Also, this type of request has been reviewed and approved in the past. However, many of those requests are in higher density neighborhoods that were zoned R1, but developed more like R2 uh, districts. Public considerations, staff has not received any objections to the request. Uh, staff recommends that the variance to the 10-foot side yard setback in the R2, 1, and 2 family residence district to allow for the construction of a 13 by 18, 484 square foot room addition with a side yard setback of seven feet, three feet less than the minimum required to be approved for the following reasons. The request would appear to not have a negative impact on the surrounding neighborhood as there is an existing detached garage in the required front yard. Uh, there would appear to be a uniqueness as there is an existing 22 by 22, 484 square foot garage uh, that was built in 1956 that was uh, put in the front yard, approximately five feet from the property line, five feet short of what is required that has existed without causing a negative impact on the area or site visibility in the area. The applicant would appear to have other options such as a 20 foot wide addition meeting the requirements of the side yard setback, but the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area or be out of character with the area. Thank you, Mr. Western. Is there any questions for staff from the board? Uh, I do want to put a record that I had previously, uh, Deborah Slater was a customer of mine. I did a loan on this house at one time, but it was years ago and I don't feel there's any conflict of interest. Chris, I have a question. Sure. Okay. Chris Western. So you say the garage, I'm looking at this map, the garage is in the front yard, but it's on Homer Street. Well, uh, corner lots have two required front yards. Okay. And so the way it works, and it probably could have been more detailed there. Okay. So along Homer, you have to be 20 feet. Mm -hmm. Along Lakeside, so put it here, right? 
you can reduce the side yard setback to 10 feet. Yes. But the garage is only the five. Is on this side. Along on Lakeside. Lake side. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any other questions for staff? None? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against this? Please come up to the microphone, give us your name and your address. And Can I pass a couple things along to you guys? You may. Me? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's fine. Oh, if you got an extra one, sure. <laughs> Thanks. I am Al Carpenter with uh, City Builders on behalf of Deborah Slater. Um, if you look in the packet there, um, one of the main things we wanted to point out and was right in line with the question we had earlier there, um, on the setback on the side yard there, there is a existing garage, 22 by 22, um, on that side facing street. Uh, the setback that we have Figured for that is approximately four foot, which looks like it's about a three foot impeding farther than what we're looking at. Um, after taking some pictures that are included there, you can kind of see how the uh, lot sets up and how the visualization is from the traffic standpoint. But um, furthermore, as we were looking at this um, after submitting for the variance here, um, it looks to us like possibly the lot line on the far side of the property where there's a 10 foot setback may be uh, depending on where that actually sits a little bit less, which would actually allow for more room on our side, making the variance no more than three foot, but possibly one or two foot. Um, we couldn't quite find the, the pin to um, distinctly get to that, but it looks like no more than three foot for certain. Um, in regards to any other properties, um, there is a second packet there uh, right around the corner would be to the southeast of the property in question here. Um, we do have a property with a neighbor that has an exact same kind of setup on a corner lot. Um, they do have a setback um, that is impeding quite a bit so to the point where it almost looks like, I mean, either right on or maybe one to two foot off of the lot lines there. Um, basically that is actually part of the house dwelling there, but as we're trying to build an addition to the home and improve the value of the home there, it felt like that was a, uh, a good comp to use. Outside of that, I think we've got uh, kind of just some other pictures included there that we thought uh, would possibly help you guys to visualize what it's like and, and hopefully see the same way we do, that we'd like to help them build a little addition to the home. Any questions for Mr. Carpenter while well, he's up here? I just have a comment. This looks very nice. The proposal. Thank you. So it's a, it is it's a like three season porch kind of thing that you. Yep, putting? it's a um, self sustaining room, so it'll have heat and air uh, oh. separately. Uh, can be blocked off from the house or open to the house. Very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions from his comments from Mr. Carpenter? No? All right. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Sir. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak for or against this? Seeing none. <clears throat> Second time. And bring it back to the board for discussion and a possible vote. I would <clears throat> make a motion that we approve the variance for the uh, to the ten foot side yard setback in the R two one and two family district to allow for the construction of a uh, thirteen by eighteen uh, square foot uh, or foot uh, room addition with a side yard set setback of seven feet three foot less than the minimum required. And it, uh, it would be approved for the following reasons. The request would appear not to have a negative impact on the neighborhood. Uh, there is existing detached garage in the required front yard already. There would uh, appear to be a uniqueness uh, as there's an existing 22 by 22 detached garage built in 1956 that was built in the required front yard along Lake Street. Uh, approximately five feet from the property line, five foot short of what is required, and the applicant would appear to have uh, 
other options such as a 21 foot wide uh, addition meeting the requirements of the side yard setback but the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area or to be uh, out of character for the area. All right. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That does pass. You can go ahead and build the addition. I'll tell you the same thing. The snow is coming soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll make a motion that you stop saying that. <laughs> a motion that I stop saying the snow's coming. <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lose my spot as chair here. <laughs> Would you like your packets back? I don't need snow. Yeah, we these don't need are it. expensive. You can have these back. Yeah. I'm going to keep mine for the file. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah, you yeah. good idea. We're just keeping one for the file. So. <laughs> Thank you. Nice Thank presentation. you very much, Al. <laughs> Thank you, you too. All right, our next item up for decision is a request by Zion Lutheran Church for a special permit for the construction of a 10 foot by 14 foot, 140 square foot shed with vertical siding within an R1, one and two family residence district located at 810 Kimball Avenue. Staff report on this. This is Dornoff with staff. This is a special permit to construct a shed um, at 140 foot square foot shed on property at 810 Kimball. Um, the request um, would appear to have a negative impact surrounding the area. The property in question is zoned R1, one and two family residence district, has been zoned as such since the adoption of zoning ordinance in 1969. <coughs> surrounding land use is under zoning to the north, residential and convenience stores, zoned R2, one and two family residence district, and C2, commercial district. Res to the south, residential zoned R1 and R2, one and two family residence district. To the east, <coughs> residential zoned R2, one and two family residence district. To the west, residential zoned R1, one and two family residence district. There would not appear to be any screening requirements for this development, although if the request were to be approved, including the use of vertical medical siding, vertical metal siding, additional screening requirements may be, need to be considered as um, a condition of approval. <coughs> The future land use map designates this area as low density residential. Special permit request would be in conformance with the land use, future land use map and comprehensive plan for the area. The zoning ordinance requires that religious facilities obtain a special permit issued by the Board of Adjustments after a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission for the construction of any structures. This is due in part to the ability to be able to develop in multiple zoning classifications as well as the impacts such as development can have on other public infrastructure such as traffic and sewer. The ordinance allows for minor changes that do not substantially alter the character of the special permit to be administratively reviewed. The applicant was informed that the shed would be considered minor administratively approved if the siting um, was compatible residentially and instead of the vertical vertical metal, um, metal siding. Um, staff is concerned the siding materials not in character of the property or question or surrounding residential neighborhood. The applicant is requesting a special permit for a 10 by 14, 140 square foot shed on property located, uh, located on the west side of the property. Um, the zoning code specific specifies that accessory structure should not be constructed of metal materials for ex exterior siding except in horizontal aluminum, steel, chime, commonly in, um, used in residential structures. The shed is not an accessory to a residential use, but it, as a special permit use, um, is in a residential area and needs to be residentially compatible. Um, on, at their October 3rd, 2017 meeting, the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission recommended approval of the special permit with vertical metal siding um, four to two in favor. Um, therefore, staff would recommend that the request for a special permit to allow shed vertical metal siding be located at the property at 10, 810 Kimball be denied for the following reasons. The request would, would appear to be have a negative impact on an incompatible with residential area. The request would not would set a precedent for allowing other accessory structures in residential areas to have vertical metal siding. The applicant would appear to have other siding alternatives that would be compatible with the residential area. However, staff recommends that a special permit to allow for a shed 
um, with common siding on residential structures be located at 812, 810 Kimball be approved for the following reasons. The request would not be would be in conformance with the comprehensive plan future land use map for the area. The request would not appear to have a negative impact around the area. The request would not appear to have negative impact pedestrian or um, vehicular traffic conditions in the area. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff from the board? I have a probably it's going to be a stupid question, but the on the minutes that you sent with the uh, planning and zoning minutes, it said that me, um, uh, put a motion to deny the special permit and the motion failed. Does that mean that the motion was approved? Shouldn't there have been a new motion the to motion say to deny was, well, it was kind of complicated. So basically they voted to deny, um, our recommendations and approve vertical middle site, the shed as is. Yeah, it was kind of confusing to us as how to... Shouldn't there have been a second motion to approve it? Because I might want to not approve something, but I may not, or I may be voting against something, and, but I can't vote for it under, under the way it was presented. Um, the way it was explained to the um, planning commission was that um, they made a motion to approve it with the vertical metal siding. And so, or the way they explained it, by voting no against our recommendation, they were voting for it. So that's how it was explained to them. I know it's confusing. <laughs> I think we were all a little confused about the whole thing. And the only variance is the vertical siding, right? Yeah. Correct. Now the shed's already up. Yeah, the shed's already up. That's what I, I, yeah. I, I should note that I received a call actually against this, I, uh, and I I told them they needed to call planning, but I don't know if they, that they did. Did you receive any calls? You just have one. I negative. have not. I have not on record. Yeah. Okay. You have one negative. Mm -hmm. Did you have one? one? Was there one person that? And Mr. Hamilton from the church is here, so he can go into more detail on what's going on. Any more? Hold on, Mr. Hamilton. Is, is there any more questions for staff from the board first before we move to public comment? All right. Mr. Hamilton, go ahead. Give us your name and address. And you can give us the church address if you'd like. All right. Dave Hamilton, 810 Kimball. So I made a few mistakes along the way. I sent somebody else down here to ask if it was okay to have a shed. They didn't ask about having a steel shed. <laughs> so one of my members got me in trouble. First thing, mistake I made was going on facility board and charge of the property. I should have said no when they asked me to do that. <laughs> now I'm stuck for three years with it. I had to do a fundraiser just to get the money to build the shed. And little did I know I was going to get in trouble for the steel shed. But the, the group that I was here with on October 3rd, one gentleman didn't want to vote yes. The rest of the ladies that sat here thought vertical siding, it matches the church. The vertical siding matched the brick of our church. The trim, the darker brown, matched the color of the rest of the church. They all thought it looked great. Only one person complained about it. And the people on Grace Line that complained about it, none of them were here. So the ones that complained just complained. I said they do that because they wanted to build something once and they got told not to. Then I talked to some of my older members at church. We tore down two houses years ago. The neighbors on Grace Lane complained about that. We made a parking lot because we had a large congregation back then. They complained about that. We told them we were going <coughs> to put a fence up, and they complained about the fence. And so, I mean, it just sounds like there's a, a pattern there. We didn't do it deliberately to get people mad at us. It looks very nice. A uh, majority of us covered up by that fence. I didn't do it to. So you sure. had a, you did come down, ask about it, and receive some type of permission. To well, Matt Meehy made the motion to not accept the steel siding, and he asked for a second, and nobody would second it. Because the other group, except for maybe one guy, he didn't really say one way or the other, 
But the rest of them thought it looked nice. It, it matched the church. It, it blended in well. It wasn't out there in the open. It's back behind the church. It's not an eyesore where it's at. Is there a permit needed period? Yeah, oh, there is. I, I got to buy that. You did? No, I haven't, but I know I, I brought my checkbook to pay for that. If when, when the person came from previous, I don't know who it was. I know I talked to him. Who came uh, down here? Yeah. Mike Meehy. Yeah. Matt, Matt's related to him somewhere or another, so I just but, wanted to. You know, I told him, yeah, you can not build a shed. You will need, you know. But he probably didn't tell you it was going to be steel, wood, vinyl. So didn't just, mention that, just asked if a shed could be built, and I said, you know, I said, you know, I told him, well, you know, you can't take up parking spots, that yeah, kind of stuff. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, know, unfortunately, I, not the right questions were asked. At I, I made the mistake of letting somebody else come down here and ask questions because I was probably doing something that worked. Right. But that clarifies me. Yeah. Just real quick. Clarification. So, I thought didn't it, we didn't do it to upset anybody on Graceline. And I think if you really look at it, 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 it almost looks like vinyl siding. I and you'll be able to see it are the ones that go. For staff. <laughs> so why why don't and, and it goes with the church. Instructions when somebody comes and asks. Yeah. Um, is it? Well, I mean, I guess. This is Western. Uh, typically, um, the the way that I've crafted my questions is first thing you do is ask what size, because over what is it? They keep moving it around. It was two hundred. Now it's back down to one hundred and twenty. Anything over 120 can't have vertical metal siding. Anything 120 and less can't. Oh, really? So that's the first question that should be asked. Is, well, but how they big? didn't discuss. It doesn't sound metal. like that. The size. No, it doesn't well, sound like it. You would have had you discuss the size. Somebody dropped the ball either on my side or on this side. And it was probably yeah. my side. So we're talking 20 square feet, and you would, we wouldn't be here arguing about it. And like anything, no matter what size garage you build at home, it's never big enough. And I thought, well, a little bit bigger shed. Yeah. So I don't know if the, the original person came down and said 120. Or maybe he didn't say then, anything. You guys, yeah, or never. You might have just said a shed. Yeah. Well, that's it. When I, the person I talked to just asked, you know, if we were locating a shed, where could it go on this prop? I mean, I, that's I, I, it. We talked about prop. That never, sounds like that sounds like Mike Meehy. Yeah. That's probably never all asked asked. The next question to the West yeah. side. I, I think I, they were misled, no matter who asked the question. Well, that's, that's, that's what I mean. I don't think yeah. it was defined, and I think it should be. That's m just my opinion <laughs> as a volunteer on this board. But um, so, I mean, it's going to cost the church money to take it down. And if we're talking about 20 feet. Right. And we're not talking. I mean, I don't like the, to make exceptions feet. on the, yeah. this right. type of right. thing. But again, right. it sounds like it was our fault. The well, they fault. didn't go out and build it and, and ask forgiveness. They came down to ask mm -hmm. the questions and yeah. didn't get the right answers or the wrong. They asked but the wrong didn't questions. Didn't ask yeah. the right questions. No matter what, they right. there's miscommunication. And so the now we, we have a building. In reality, we have a building that doesn't meet code or ordinance, what are we going to do with it? 24 square feet. And the vertical does match the church, right. too. But Luckily, it, it, yeah. and, and it's harsh. But it is a precedent. It, it is a precedent. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah, so that's the concern that's in the, that regard. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is and it isn't. But, you know, if everybody comes down and asks and then gets misdirected, then we aren't setting any precedent. Or, or even with this one, we're not. I don't feel. We still, we're back in the ordinance, but we're saying there's mitigating circumstances in this one. And why punish property owner? Congregation. <clears throat> yep, I agree. Oh, this is Western. I just want to reiterate, I, I wasn't indicating that John didn't ask what size or anything like that, but right. but that's an important Somewhere. That's an important thing I to think it is an important size. thing that because when someone, if on, I come down and say I want to build a shed, I mean, now I know, but I wouldn't right. know that I couldn't do right. a certain. True. So I think that we, the city needs to, the staff needs to tell. In writing. Yeah, it should be a little slip of paper. Anyway. So they did have a building permit. No, they paid $225. No, they did not have a building permit. They paid $200. They did not? No, that's what I got to do yet. Yeah, because that's one thing Again, we do tell everybody is 
over 120 feet, you need a building permit. And again, I sent the wrong guy down here to yeah. ask the questions. Should never got on that board, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> There's just been one battle after another. Okay, well, I think the shed looks nice. I think we should just. Thank you. I just, I, I just have a problem with setting a precedent. I, I, mm -hmm. I hate to put the, the church and I don't think we're, we're going to be setting a precedent. It's a, it's, there's a little uniqueness to it. Yep. Considering. I think there is. Yeah, we all agree on that. So is there going to be a building permit issued? Absolutely. I'm going to go get one as soon as I'm done here or tomorrow, whatever Excellent. time it is. I'll, I'm going to do that no matter what. I have to. Okay. Unless we're going to make them tear it down and the city's going to make them tear it down. Oh, well, that's true. But <laughs> if you got a building permit and it's built according to building codes other than the siding, it's fine, right? And if it wasn't, they're going to have to come back to us later for a variance, wouldn't they? If it wasn't built to code? No, you can't get a variance to building code. So then it would have to be torn down anyway. Or just fixed. I, I, would, I would think I was told that I, the shed is okay there. I can get a permit to have the shed there, but it just can't have steel siding on it was the argument on October 3rd. Exactly. Unless we give you this variance. Exactly. What's it going to take, cost-wise, to change from vertical siding? I don't you know. have any idea on that. And I know I, I spent the I spent all the money they gave me, so sure. I think we'll end up taking if we have to take it off, we'll end up painting it. I personally don't think it's a big deal. Why don't we vote? Do a motion. Do a motion. Do a motion. So. Okay. So the, the, the staff recommendation is to allow the special permit. Oh, the, I'm sorry. With change in the siding. The planning okay. and zoning approved They would approve it if you change the siding. We okay. have to make a... We have to... Okay. I, I was thinking of something else. Allow a special permit with the... Vertical and is there any other screening that could be put up? Would that be a compromise? Hmm? Just on the one side that you don't see. On the back side, would there be? Where, where do they, where's Grace Line see it from? Looks like um, right out of the back back of it. Yeah, on the west side, they can see it from the west. I mean, of maybe a tree or so. Looks like there's you a know, tree to the south put in the way. or I north. I think that would be fine. That'd be the north. Shielding it from 4th it Street. Like it's so the picture on the picture on the right is right. Grace Line yeah. side. The bottom right. Yeah. Like I said, half of it's covered by that fence. The part that faces Ford Street is blocked by a tree. We're going to have vertical fence to look at anyway. And, and vertical church. It goes with the vertical side. Yeah. We just wanted to blend and not stick out like a sore thumb. That's how we thought we'd go with the vertical. Well, I'm going to make a motion so we get this off a of dead center that we approve the special request or special permit to allow for the shed at 810 Kimball and that it uh, have the vertical siding, whatever it takes, plus any other, um, that, that, that it's still in, in uh, conformance with the, the com comprehensive plan and future land use map. Uh, that uh, there's no, uh, doesn't appear to be any negative impact on the pedestrian or ve vehicular traffic. The only, uh, yeah, the only thing would be is that we allow vertical siding, metal siding over whatever else there would be. That's my motion. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Um, would there be something we should add in about why we don't think it's a precedent i can continue I can add to in the, there that the uh, it, it appears there was a miscommunication from the city and the between the city and the uh, property owner church board. and church, the church church board member church board member and uh, that's what caused the problem and the, therefore we don't feel we're setting a precedence that we still do not, you know, 
we, we agree with the ordinance that these sheds should not have metal vertical siding over 120 square feet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Good, good, good thing for recording. Can I second that again, that addition? All right, we have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The chair votes nay. And four to one, you can keep the check. Check. <laughs> thank you, first of all. And thank all you guys for listening to me twice. Turn the I'm, I'm going off the board tomorrow, so I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you guys do this stuff. Easy way out. Yeah, I do. I'll get that permit right, done now, so I'm out of trouble. We are back now to our... Um, to our first decision item that we tabled. That is a request by signs by tomorrow on behalf of MJ Holdings for three variances to allow for the replacement of the faces on pre existing 21 square foot self illuminating sign with a translucent background. With the ordinance requires signs to have an op 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 opaque, 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 opaque background. <laughs> Number two, to allow for a total of 75.53 square foot of total signage, which is 52.5. One three square foot more than the 23.4 square foot allowed within the R4 multiple family residence district. Number three, allow for signage to be placed on three walls and located at 110 Plaza Circle. Staff report. Okay, uh, this is uh, Heiberger with uh, staff. Uh, the uh, applicant is requesting a variance to allow for the replacement of the faces on a pre existing 21 foot self illuminated sign and allow for. Uh, 75.53 square feet of total signage, wall and monument on three signs, uh, which is 52.13 square feet <coughs> more than allowed uh, within the R4 multiple residence district. Uh, the property is located at 110 Plaza Circle. The site is currently zoned R4 multiple residence district and has been since the adoption of the zoning ordinance. The uh, surrounding properties are zoned as uh, follows. Uh, to the north is conditional zoning one and two family residence district, office buildings. Uh, to the east is uh, multiple family residence district, office buildings. Uh, to the south is R4, multiple uh, family residence district with office buildings. And to the west is R1, one and two uh, family residence district with single family homes. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the neighborhood or surrounding residential or, and commercial properties. Uh, the uh, request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. Uh, the proposed request would be in conformance with the uh, classification of this area as mixed residential, low, medium, high density professional offices on the future land use map. Uh, within the uh, City of Waterloo, a comprehensive plan adopted February 3rd, 2003. Um, the section of zoning ordinance that pertains to this request is uh, Chapter 1026-1, Outdoor Advertising Signs and Billboards, R4, Multiple Residence District. Uh, the applicant is requesting a variance to the maximum allowed total signage uh, based on square footage of uh, 23.4 square feet. Uh, there is 117 linear feet of street frontage divided by five to allow for uh, four wall signs, 10.56 uh, square feet, 13.33 square feet, 17 square feet, and 13.64 square feet. And a monument sign, uh, 21 square foot with a total square footage of 75.53 square feet. Uh, and in addition to the variance, it has also been requested to allow for the replacement of the faces on a pre-existing 21 square foot self-illuminated sign and advertising be placed on three sides of the building. Uh, current zoning regulations for advertising, advertising purposes only allow for two wall or uh, monument signs and no more than uh, uh, two sides within the R4 multiple family residence district. Uh, for this request, one side will have a monument sign and a wall sign and two additional sides will just have one wall sign each. Um, for the uh, criteria, lack of reasonable return, there, there would appear to be a lack of reasonable return of the request as the applicant's rear office tenant would be unable to advertise their business location, um, you know, not being allowed to install 17 square foot and 13.64 uh, square foot of wall signs on the property without asking for a variance, Unique, uniqueness. There appears to be somewhat of a uniqueness to this request. The request is located along West Ridgeway Avenue, which is classified as a minor arterial roadway and um, Circle Plaza, which is classified as a private street. Uh, the property is also 
located in an area designated uh, mixed residential, low, medium, high density professional offices on the city of Waterloo uh, future land use map. Um, public consideration staff has not received any complaints re regarding this request. Uh, staff recommends approval of three variances to allow for the replacement of the faces on uh, one pre existing 21 square foot self illuminated sign with a translucent background when the ordinance requires the site signs to have an opaque background number two allow for the total of 75.53 total square feet of total square footage which is 52.13 square foot more than the 23.4 square foot allowed within the R4 multiple residence district and three allow for signage to be placed on three walls be approved for the following reasons uh, the property is located along Ridgeway Avenue, which is, you know, classified as a minor artillery roadway. And two, the request would be in conformance with the future land use map, designating this property as mixed residential, low, medium, high density, and professional offices. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Are, are these signs replacing existing signs? Did Northwestern Mutual have signs in these same areas or... Um, Northwestern Mutual, they had basically the monument sign on, on the front, and it was pre-existing. Um, for some odd reason, this you know may have been approved accidentally because we're only supposed to have opaque backgrounds, but it's translucent. Uh, so, so basically, this would you know um, help kind of correct the deficiency that occurred. And there was just another <coughs> wall sign um, on. On the on the front front side of the building facing Ridgeway. So we're talking two two signs that weren't originally there. Um. Yeah, there there well there's there'll be there'll be three because there'll be uh, basically there'll be one on Ridgeway and the one on the side and then another one um, opposite there there'll be a, a, a essentially three three additional wall signs with this request. Because the the second business is back there, you've probably been back there, Bob. I used yeah. to work in that building years and years ago. Mm -hmm. Not my, Northwestern, though. Yeah. It was GMAC. Mortgage. Northwestern was mine. And then, <clears> but that was there's Bob, parking uh, back there, and it makes sense to have the signs back there with the to <clears> call in yeah, and know right. I'm going to yeah. this counseling. Oh, versus I agree. Yeah, the R4 is practice. extremely strict <laughs> in terms of what it allows, but, you know, uh, with this variance request, it, w it would allow them to, you know, display the advertising they need. Obviously, there's nobody in the audience that would like to speak for or against this, unless I'm. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we bring it. To, any further questions for staff? No, sorry. I'll make a motion to approve the three variances to allow for the replacement of the face on a on number one, a pre-existing 24 square foot self-illuminated sign with a translucent background. When the ordinance requires signs to have an opaque background. Two, to allow for the total of 75.53 square feet of total signage, which is 52.13 feet square feet, more than the 23.4 square feet allowed within the R4 multiple family district. And three, to allow for signage to be placed on three walls of the building for the following reasons. The property is located along Ridgeway Avenue, which is classified as a minor arterial roadway. The request would be in conformance with the future land use map, designating this property for mixed residential, low, medium, high density professional offices. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That passes. Our next item is discussion items. Is there any? Um, actually, we probably need to discuss. I need to. Do I have something. Um, uh, well, we can wait till next month, I guess, but be thinking about December's BOA meeting. We're already having uh, items that might be coming to the board in December, so we need to be thinking, do you want to do it? What is that, fourth? Um, be the 26th. I won't be here. Yeah, right. be the 26th. So the 19th is the Tuesday, third Tuesday, okay. and then like the 26th, <clears> the, the day after Christmas. I won't be here, but... Anybody else? No. Not on the 26th. Is that, uh, hmm? I'm always is that a there. holiday? No. Is that a two? Well, I guess it wouldn't be. It's a Tuesday. No. It's, it's, it's a day after Christmas. Yeah, I know, but. No, but it's not. You do. Sometimes that's a holiday. Christmas isn't it? is on Monday, yeah. 
<clears throat> but staff does have the Friday off, and I believe the Tuesday, Tuesday. off as well, day before and day after. Uh, okay. That's what I thought. So maybe it's better for us to go, what did you say, the 19th? Is that, can we do that? Or? I could. I could do that. I can do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Makes, uh, me, okay. makes me move a little faster, but <laughs> that's okay. That's right, Chris. You need, <laughs> that, you need we'll that fire. Two Christmas shopping done. There, right? you need that I know. Fire. I'm going to seriously try to start this year early. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> I'm a typical man, I can tell you that. I do have one other question, um, and I think you guys brought it up last time at in the parking lot, is for who's going to replace us. Who's all getting off the board? Well, let's let's talk about that. What's my date? So that I've been looks here like for like Brad's term expires two two of twenty. Sandy's term expires twelve eight nineteen. Bob actually expires before the December meeting. Hey. You can be re what? Oh, you're gonna. I'm go. retire retiring. You know what? Why am I still on the board then? I, I mean, give me a minute. No, no Sandy, you're, you're still around for a couple of years. I don't um, think so. Sue's done actually before the December meeting too. Ah, well, Sue's got to leave. So we have go. three, three of us potentially. Which wouldn't even. Well, you can do for, three. You can. Do three. We can. It's, it's five. You but can. are you getting off? Well, yes. You you have to have uh, everybody has to vote the same way. And what happens if you win? You've got to get off. I'm not going to talk about that. But uh, but be on this board. That's a good question. When mm -hmm. does that start? When, do, when would your... It would be know, the first of the year. That's... Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's just... Let me ask this question one more time. Mm -hmm. How can that be when I've been on this board? You just You've been on this board since September 12th, 2007. <laughs> A lifetime yeah. appointment. I know. Ten years. I know. We were just hoping you didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my deal. I'm retiring October 31st. So um, thank you. And I um, will be gone a little bit. So I don't know how much I'll be here. I mean, I, I don't have, I mean, you know, the pay works for me. <laughs> <laughs> so but still i don't believe that it's you that think? i'm the one that's not expiring before these guys yeah we'll look into it but you know you could always read your packet on the beach too so uh, and then send in my <laughs> vote yeah, send in your vote send yeah. in my vote oh i didn't know that <laughs> from the beach i didn't know that <laughs> well what is the process to try to get someone on the board yeah i'll uh i'll make sure next week eric and i will when he gets back from vacation that we'll start working on uh, so if you know I mean, somebody, I, I got put on the board by just see, reading it in the paper and right. applying. That's Be, right, but you're going to see that we're going to need some a female. They're going to say that. So, mm -hmm. so if you know anybody that, um, I mean, they 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 they're trying to make sure the board is equally. Is there any certain qualifications they need to? Not really. Alive. And I mean, breathing. Quentin would have to approve us. I think that's the, the bottom line. Yes. So Buck approved me. So <laughs> <laughs> Buck approved me. So. All right, fine. Live in Waterloo. You can contact the board yeah, you have to live or work in Waterloo. Or have some real estate background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that helps a lot. Oh, I don't know. You or guys do. You guys do a good job on the recommendation, and I think there's a lot of common sense to this. Oh, yeah. And a lot of it is. Mm -hmm. It's very true. So, but, and they give us the rules and. I'm getting 72 next year. And it's oh, Bob, it's once a month. <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> My anyway. Wife hopes somewhere. <laughs> so, we, so, we are desperately going to need you mean, some new. You're going to go somewhere and she's going to stay here? Right. Is that. No, no. no. <laughs> she's looking at houses in La Crosse. So, so, would Bob and I really be done next month? So, I guess. We'd be, how would how would that work, Chris? Would we? I, I would imagine because um, it takes time uh, that we would maybe ask you hang around until we get replacements if that's okay. okay. Yeah, hopefully we can. Well, that's have, kind of what you yeah. already knew because Sue doesn't live or work in Waterloo anymore, so right. that was that was yeah. her deal. And um, so I mean, if it didn't, if if you did win and you two got off, there'd be two of us. 
Well, and if what Sandy retires, there could be. Well, you are definitely. I just think that's the craziest thing yeah. I ever okay. saw. Okay, but the, at the best, there would be two of us, which we could not have a January meeting. But I thought that for two years right. now. Like, yeah. So something has to be done. Yeah. yeah, so Eric will be back, I think, on Monday. We'll get cracking yeah. on. Uh, we should put it on the agenda for next month. We'll yeah. seriously have a discussion about it, because I have been trying to think about who I might know who would be on this, like, what is it? An hour a month? It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not some. Take a whole lot of your time, back. Bob. <laughs> you need some fresh blood. So. Oh, I make a motion we adjourn. I'm just Second. kidding. <laughs> get out of here All right. Before I get All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.